Hi, folks. It's great to be with you today. Coming over our podcast. I hope you take time to listen today. It's going to be great visiting with you. I'm speaking about prayer today. We're entering into the year 2022, and we want to enter it with prayer. We're going to have 21 praise, days of prayer at church, and we're going to start it out with a day of fasting, and I hope that all listening will participate in this. Uh, prayer is an, incent, an essential ingredient in our Christian walk. We have to have prayer in order to make the mix work properly. Just like you'd make a cake. Uh, you have different ingredients in the cake. You can have too much of one, not enough of another, or be missing an ingredient altogether, and you're not going to have cake. I don't know what you're going to have, but it won't be what you expect to have in your cake. Prayer is an essential ingredient to the believer's life. It's absolutely part of it. There's about 36,000 books written on prayer. We estimate maybe 1.3 million articles and pamphlets, and maybe as much as 4 million plus sermons have been preached about prayer. Uh, prayer is important. It, uh, we are designed to be people who pray. If you're going to be a Christian, uh, it's kind of like um, uh, God. you have a God void in your soul. You're made in the image of God. You're not like the rest of creation. There is a spot in you looking for God, and people fill it with a lot of things. It's like an empty room in a house, and uh, you can fill it with all kinds of garbage, or you can bring in someone to live in that room. And that's when the Lord moves in your life and fills that special room that he has made for himself. We are made in God's image. We are his creation. God desires for us to walk uh, with him and talk with him. Uh, it's so cool when we do. His spirit then dwells in our spirit and our conscious mind, and we communicate through how? Through prayer. Uh, nobody feels real good about praying. Uh, after all, look who you're addressing. And it's not a comfortable in so many ways until you really understand prayer. And a lot of misconceptions there are about prayer. We feel frustrated. We feel inept. We feel awkward. We sometimes don't have even under any understanding. And it's like a mystery to us, and we feel we need help. God has set the world in our hearts, it says in Ecclesiastes 3.11. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has set the world in their hearts so that no man can find out the work that God makes from the beginning to the end. We're a little compromised by the position we're put in. All we know is this world. But God knows things beyond this world and beyond even what we can imagine or even think. Uh, can you pray too little or can you pray too much? That's a question. Can you pray too little? Can you pray too much? There are not good prayers and there are not people who are good at praying. There are just people who pray faithfully. It, there's a scripture. It's in Roman 8.26. Let me read that to you. Uh, it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. It says here, But the Spirit itself make us intercession for us, which groanings with groanings that cannot be uttered. It's, it's an amazing thing to see God come through for you in prayer. But you gotta pray to find it out. Uh, there's, uh, uh, the disciples asked the Lord, teach us to pray. And so this is where we get a Luke 11, 1. They address him there and they'll be dressing him again in Matthew here in a moment. But they address him in Luke 11, 1, and he replies with the Lord's Prayer, Our Father, which art in heaven, and on it goes. It's an amazing way to pray and the things it covers. But let's go on a minute. The Apostle Paul uses the Greek word, ideal eptos. Ideal eptos. It's an interesting word. He uses it in, in uh, four different verses. 
And one he says, for God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of the Son, that without ceasing, that's the word, without ceasing, I make mention of you always, always in my prayers. Without ceasing, it's one word in the Greek. Uh, we would say two words, without ceasing. Again, it says in First Corinthians, in First Thessalonians 1 3 remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father and then in First First Thessalonians 2 13 it says for this cause also thank we God without ceasing a continuous thanking of God because when ye receive the Word of God which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the words of men, but as it is in truth the words of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. And there again he uses that word, that Greek word, without ceasing. It's a continuation. It's like a river. It runs without ceasing. Uh, now the scripture I want to share with you is First Thessalonians 5.17. Pray without ceasing. It's a continual action. You say, how, how, can I, how, how can I possibly pray without ceasing? Ah, the idea is that you're always without ceasing, striving to have an attitude of prayer before God, ready to bring your life before him, ready to, to look to him to solve your issues. Uh, the God is a central ingredient, and prayer is what pours it in the cake mix. God is a, the essential ingredient in your life, and prayer is what pours him in. And with that prayer, that prayer has elements of praise. It has elements of thanksgiving, as, the, as we learn the Lord's Prayer. Always pray. Always have an attitude of prayer. Always bring all things to him. Paul's theme through the whole chapter of 1 Thessalonians is always, evermore, never give up, continue with, under all circumstances, whatever appears, trust the Lord, pray, go to him. Our frustration about prayer come from misconception. Prayer is not magic. It's not a genie in a bottle. It's, uh, it's interesting, magic comes from a Greek word, and we loosely translate it. We use it in our vocabulary. Hocus pocus. It's, uh, it's pronounced just a little bit different in the real Greek, but it comes out with us. Hocus pocus, a bunch of just froth. Uh, prayer is not a froth. It's not magic. It's not a genie. It's not a spell. It's not a chant. It's not a fire extinguisher. It's not just for a crisis or a flat tire. We don't use it for uh, just every, whenever there's an emergency. It's not like uh, let's make a deal or let's uh, beg or let's bargain or a game, a tug of war. It's not a ritual. It's not just repetition. It was never designed to make you look spiritual. Matthew 6, when you pray, verse 5, and, and I want to look over at Matthew 6, verse 5, and it says, And when you pray, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue uh, and in the corners of the streets, uh, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou... When you pray, when you pray, enter into your closet. And when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret. You know, he also repeats almost this exact uh, command or instruction to us when it comes to giving alms. Do it in secret. Our prayers are to be done in secret. And look what he says, And thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. You want a reward? In this passage here, it says the ungodly have their reward already. They won't be getting any more. 
is to be seen of men. But he tells us, go in secret and be seen to your father, and he'll see that you're rewarded openly. He says, but now in verse 7, but when you pray, use not vain repetition as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. It gets prayer down to a simple little ingredient, a constant communication with God. You'd think it would back off to see, he'd say something like, oh, just say a few words now and then and you'll be all right. No, he wants us always to have a constant communication, already, always ready to jump in and to ask God for help. Oh, it's so different than this world is. It's so different. God's attentive to your prayers. He wants to be with you. And again, it starts out, here's how you pray, Jesus said, our Father, which is in heaven. Hey, it's been great to be with you today. There's more about prayer to come. But uh, uh, let's be people who pray. Let's enter in. Thank you for listening today. See you later. Bye-bye.